Welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Bob Duvall, and I'm here today with my guest, Dr. Rodney Hogue. And Rodney, you have been in ministry since 1977. That's right. And during a large part of that time, 32 years of that, you were a pastor. That's right. So you had uh, the opportunity to counsel a lot of people, I'm sure, during that time. And one day you had an epiphany, you had a realization that yeah. most of these people have a common condition that's leading to their need for counseling. What, yeah. what issue were they struggling with? You know, having ministered to a ton of people, you know, when you're pastoring, you do tons and tons of counseling. So, mm -hmm. so one of the things I found is that in almost every conversation I'm going to have with somebody, somewhere in that conversation, we're going to have to deal with an unforgiveness issue. So that's like a, a really common theme that I found that we always had to kind of deal with uh, when, whenever we did any kind of a pastoral counseling. Now, it, it's such a, it's a simple, it sounds simple, but it's not necessarily that simple when it comes down to it. Yeah. Uh, so the goal here, and, and you've taught th this way, is to be able to go through your day with like a, a Teflon spiritual armor that offenses just kind of bounce off of you. But most believers aren't at that place yet. That's right. They need to get there. Yeah. So what is, why are believers who know better, people that know Jesus, they've been forgiven by Jesus, why don't they forgive others? Well, some people think that they're actually letting other people off the hook. They think that if I forgive them, then somehow I'm excusing what they did. I'm just letting them get, get away with something. And that's, that's really a lie from the devil. That is a lie. <laughs> to, to keep them in that. That, that <laughs> is a lie. I mean, the enemy just blinds us with that one. Yeah. And we don't really realize this, that, that nobody's really getting off the hook. I mm. mean, they really off the I mean, he, here's the thing. You know, Romans chapter 12, verse, verse 19 says this, you know, uh, Paul is saying this. He says, you know, brother, don't, don't take your own revenge. Leave room for the wrath of God. Then he quotes Deuteronomy 32, for vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So bitterness is nothing more than just unfulfilled revenge. Mm. And it's never your job to take your own revenge. That's always God's job. But if you try to do God's job and you stand in to do God's job, God's not going to go through you in order to deal with that person because you're doing God's job. So in a in a sense, you're almost like protecting that person mm. and keeping them from coming into where they need to do because you're trying to do God's job. So you have to let God do His job, and He's really good at doing His job, and we're not very good at doing it. Yeah, I think, uh, to come back to that point, I think that some people feel like, well, I'm, I'm punishing them. Yeah. for what they did to me. Or I'm it, hurting them. I'm hurting them, and that's, that's a lie. I'm getting even with them. That's a lie from the enemy. <laughs> but, but what's the truth? The truth is they're standing in the way yeah. of God they're being hindering. able to... They're yeah. hindering. Right, yeah. Yeah, they are. Let's get back to basics here. Okay. What is forgiveness at its core? What is it really? Well, for, forgiveness is releasing a person of their sin against you. The truth is, is that we've all been sinned against almost every day. Mm. I mean, we can pretty much expect that as I'm going to go throughout this day, somebody's going to offend me. Even you know, when I get in my car and I'm driving, somebody's going to offend me at the store. Something, something's going to happen. So, you know, forgiveness begins with acknowledging that you've actually been offended. Because mm. some people don't want to acknowledge it. Yeah. They're yeah. thinking like, well, you know, if I acknowledge this, I'm like an inferior Christian or something like that. Mm. But the issue is not whether or not you're going to get offended. The question is, how quickly can you resolve the offense? Right, right. Forgiveness is not saying what they did was okay. It's not saying that you've come to terms with it. What it does is that it just, it just removes the power of that event off of your life. It's, yeah. Now, I think it's also important to point out that it might be an expectation I have of that other person. Yeah. Like, let's say I expected you to do something yeah. and you didn't do it. And so I, I'm holding on forgiveness toward you. So it might not be some action you did. I just didn't get my expectations fulfilled. Yeah. So um, talk about how it's like releasing a debt. What does that mean? Well, that's the terminology that Jesus used. 
we find it in the, the Lord's Prayer in, in the book of Matthew. You know, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Because what, whenever I sin against you, then I've created an obligation that needs to be paid. Uh, and, and you'd like me to pay that debt. But yeah, the, and so many people, they, you know, you hear the, the expression, well, you owe me an apology. And that's correct you terminology. Owe me. <laughs> yeah, that's really correct terminology. But the way you want me to pay that debt is that you'd like me to suffer a little bit. Mm. But mm. the truth is, no matter how much I suffer, it will never compensate you for your loss. Right, right. So the only way that you're going to be free of that obligation, because what you find, if, if you're going to hang on to that, then you're going to be bound to me because you're waiting for the day that I can pay that debt. So you actually become in bondage to your, to your, to your oppressor, you mm -hmm. know, because you refuse to forgive. So the only way you can be free of them is to release what they owe you. Gotcha. Now let's deal with another reason why people don't forgive. They might feel like if I forgive, I'm going to have to be reconciled with that person. And that might be a person that's still uh, you know, inflicting harm toward me or speaking a, a badly toward me. Is that true that I've got to be reconciled? Well, God really mm. does love reconciliation. I mean, he's, he's all about reconciliation, but the problem is, is that reconciliation requires two people and you cannot mm. control that other person at all. Yeah. Not only that, but sometimes for reconciliation takes place, there's got to be things like maybe some restitution, there's got to be some correction of wrong, maybe a mess needs to be cleaned up. Uh, those are all a part of the, the reconciliation process, and you have no control over anybody else. The only one you have control over, it happens to be you. And the truth is some people are not even safe to be around. Mm. Some people are explosive. Some people right. are just angry. Mm -hmm. And so you need to forgive them. You don't have to get close to them. You don't have to release emotional boundaries that you would set up, mm -hmm. you know, that would keep you from, you know, engaging in further harm because of that. Yeah. Now we're going to take a break right here. And when we come back, uh, I hope you're beginning to uh, feel the need now to forgive and, and reasons why. But when we come back, I want to get to some benefits. You know, there's some positive benefits to forgiveness. What's in it for me? We'll find out in just a moment. Welcome back to Something More. We're talking about forgiveness. It sounds pretty basic, but it's very, very necessary. And Rodney, there are, you know, some dangers to not forgiving, but there are some real benefits. Uh, you know, I think Absolutely. Christians are like others. It's like, well, what's in it for me? What do yeah. I get out of this? There's some real benefits to, to forgiveness, to walking in forgiveness, being unoffendable, having that Teflon spiritual armor, if you will, and not hanging on yeah. to unforgiveness. So um, one of those benefits is when somebody forgives, it, it changes the, the spiritual yeah. climate. What does that mean? Whenever you forgive, you're actually shifting the atmosphere over you. It's, it's an atmosphere of grace that is around you. Mm. You know, Matthew 10, 8 says, freely we have received and freely give. So you actually, whenever you're giving what you have received, you actually position yourself in the flow of grace. Mm. So you're walking in grace, you're able to give the grace because whatever God has given you, you can actually give you know, to somebody else. And then that agreement with heaven actually puts a, a bit of protection around you and actually even shifts the atmosphere over you. Mm. Now you travel nationally, internationally, and, and so you've seen this many times, what we're about to talk about. People get healed yeah. when they forgive. Now I love the story of this woman that came to yeah. the church meeting and, yeah. and her husband had deserted her 25 years before. Yeah. She had, she had back pain. She yeah. didn't come for prayer about forgiveness or anything. She had back pain, but you were asking her about her husband and yeah. what, what came out of that? Well, you know, she was on social security disability. I mean, that's how bad her pain was. Mm. Her husband had deserted her I, and, and boy, I, she just came for prayer. I mean, she's a new person at the church. I knew nothing about her. She comes in, she asked for prayer for her back. As we're getting ready to pray, the Lord said, ask her about her husband. Mm. I said, okay, you know, <laughs> tell me about your husband and then, all of a sudden, they, you know, oh, that man, you won't believe what that man did. You know, he left me. I had to raise those kids by myself. Yeah. I had to work two yeah. to three jobs. Mm. You know, I mean, she was just railing on me. And then when I asked her, I said, well, would you like to forgive him? 
He goes, no, I don't want to forgive him. You, you know, they, he doesn't deserve to be forgiven. You know, mm -hmm. he, he had just, I mean, it, she had to raise those kids by herself, working right. all these yeah. jobs. But the problem is, is that because it happened so long ago, she thought, oh, I'm over it now. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't over it. Right. But the moment that she forgave, her back pain was, was healed. Right that Right evening. then. Okay. It was completely healed. And wow. one of the things we found is that, in fact, most of the people that we see get healed in one way or another, really there's a forgiveness issue with a lot of these people. I've seen more people get physically healed by their decision mm. to forgive than any other, any, any other thing. Because what happens, the flow of grace comes upon the body. Right. You're actually out of grace and then you come back in the body. Mm. My wife and I were in, in uh, Brazil. And uh, we were, you know, with, with this crusade, I, we had a, a line of about, I don't know, 15 women in this line, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they're all women. The first one comes up and she asks us, you know, I, you know, pain in her back. We're getting ready to pray. The Lord says, see if she needs to forgive somebody. She goes, yeah, there's this man. She'll see, you know, she, when she forgave the guy, she was healed. Mm -hmm. Second lady, same thing. She comes up, had a pain in her back. You know, Lord says, ask her if she needs to forgive. Sure enough, she had a, somebody, a man she needed to forgive, and when she forgave, she was healed. Mm. When the third lady came up, I didn't even have to ask the Lord because she had a pain in her back. I didn't you even knew need, what was going I, on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and when the fourth lady came, I go, okay, this, there's a trend here. And the truth is mm. every one of those lady had a back pain. It was the only time this has happened. Everyone had a back pain. Every one of them had a man who hurt them. Every one of them, when they forgave, you know, they were, they, they were healed. Mm. There's something about bitterness that just kind of comes in the bones right. and seeks in the, you know, penetrates the bone. And it doesn't even matter how long it's been. Mm. There was a lady in Tucson, Arizona, who she was free of a 20 year neck pain because she finally forgave the guy who had run into her 20 years ago. Oh my. She had had it for 20 years. And when she forgave him, she was healed. Now, walking in forgiveness, another benefit is that it can allow us to, to move into our destiny yeah. with God. Now, there was uh, Joseph. Yeah. Everybody knows the story of Joseph yes. in the Bible. If anybody had the opportunity to walk in unforgiveness, yes. I mean, your brother sell you out, you know, to, to just yeah. be a slave, and yet he walked in forgiveness, and, you know, what did that, what did that do in Joseph's life? Well, one thing that, that bitterness does, it keeps you tied to the past. Hmm. You're tethered to the past and you're not able to go forward into your fullness of your destiny. Like you said, Joseph in the Old Testament, that guy had all of the reason in the world not, not to forgive his, his, his brothers for what they did to him. And they kept thinking that the hammer's going to drop on them. You know, they, they kept mm -hmm. thinking that, oh no, he's going to get us. And then when right. he didn't, they're thinking, oh no, you know, we're wait when dad dies, mm -hmm. then he's going to get us. And that's where Joseph at the end, when he met with them after the, his dad died, he said, guys, you meant this for bad, but, but God meant it for good. Mm -hmm. Joseph was mm -hmm. able to come into the fullness of his destiny because he didn't hold that stuff against the, his brothers. Yeah. So we're able to come into our destiny, you know, whenever we forgive. Otherwise, we're still tied to the past. We're still mm -hmm. tethered to the things in the past. Now, those are some great benefits and there are other benefits. But let's say I'm still on the fence. I know I'm supposed to. I know there are great benefits, but I just don't want to forgive. What's, what am I risking at that point? What, what is going to happen to me? You well, know? you know, Matthew, excuse me, Luke 6, 38, which we mostly know about, you know, we, we usually hear that verse in the midst of the offering that's given the church, you know, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, pour into your lap, right? By your standard of measure, it's going to be right. measured back to you. Right. But the context of that in the previous verse is about judging, condemning, pardoning. Mm. And so it's, it's like whatever comes out of you comes back to you and it comes back in a greater form. So if negativity is coming out, because the truth is, is that if there's bitterness, blessing's not what's coming out. Mm. And earlier in that passage, it talks about bless those who curse you. But if negativity is coming out of you and bitterness is there, that's what's coming back to you. And it's coming back to you in a greater measure than when it left you. Mm. And, and I like to think of it this way. It's like, um, it's not like God's up there with the hammer 
you know, waiting for you to walk in on forgiveness and then boom, it's more like he's up there with his umbrella over you, protection yeah. and favor yeah. and destiny and direction. Yeah. And you're saying, I'm not going to forgive. Yeah. I'm going to step out from under that umbrella. That's right. And expose yourself. Yeah. So here's the grace flow. When <laughs> I give what I have received, I'm in the place of grace. And that place of grace is a place of protection. When I don't give what I've received and I've stepped out of that place, the place of God's grace. And so I'm actually unprotected and the enemy is actually looking for people. They can actually, you know, torment. If you, all you have to do is read that passage in, in Matthew chapter 18, you know, when the guy didn't forgive and was, and, and was put into that prison, it mm -hmm. says that the tormentors released on him. Mm -hmm. So the enemy is looking for unprotected believers who won't forgive so they, they can, they can basically inflict torment upon them. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take another break. When we come back, you might say, okay, I've, I've forgiven and maybe you've even had to work through bitterness and you're on the other side and praise God. But am I done? Is that it? Am I good now? We'll find out in just a moment. Rodney Hope didn't understand that believers in Jesus could be oppressed by demonic spirits until he commanded a demon to leave him in the name of Jesus. To his surprise, it left him. He experienced incredible freedom and authority and now wants to mentor you on how to fight from a place of victory and lead others into liberty. Call now and get Rodney Hoag's brand new book, Liberated, and his three-part audio teaching series, Jumpstart Your Freedom. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9680. Rodney's anointed brand new book, Liberated, offers you powerful tools for discerning and defeating the enemy's work through the power of the Holy Spirit. Discover how to operate in your spiritual jurisdiction of authority when confronting demons. Recognize signs and symptoms of demonic oppression. Identify and close any doors granting demons access to your life. Confidently deal with evil spirits when they manifest. Step-by-step -step, minister deliverance for yourself and others. The book includes a list of lies that people believe, important truths about God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, examples of false identities people embrace, common truths about your identity and Messiah Jesus. The book also includes powerful prayers to set you and others you know free from habitual sin, sexual perversion and immorality, involvement in occult and cult practices, substance abuse, generational curses, word curses, soul ties, bondage of fear, spirit of religion, and more. You will also receive Rodney Hoag's powerful three-part audio teaching series, Jumpstart Your Freedom. In this exclusive three-part audio teaching series, Rodney unveils the most common areas in your life where the enemy tries to gain control, shares how to take back your authority and live victoriously, leads you through prayers of deliverance to break spiritual strongholds. On part one, the power of words and agreement, learn how to break the power of word curses from hell and receive word blessings from heaven. On part two, the power of forgiveness. Discover the benefits and blessings released to you from heaven when you forgive others. On part three, generational curses and blessings. Understand how to break off generational curses and begin to receive generational blessings. Don't miss out on getting Rodney Hogue's brand new book, Liberated, and his three-part audio teaching series, Jumpstart Your Freedom. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 968. Eight zero. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, Post Office Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9680 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back to something more. Again, we're talking about forgiveness. It may not be the most exciting topic to you, but it's very, very important. There's a lot of great benefits uh, to forgiveness. So we've talked about some of those benefits. And we've also, uh, right before the break, we mentioned, let's say I've worked through all of that. I'm doing good. I've forgiven as far yeah. as I know. And even if I've, I've had bitterness, I've, I've dealt with that. But that was like three weeks ago, and now I, I'm starting to have feelings again of unforgiveness. I mean, you know, yeah. what do I do? I mean, isn't, it, isn't that it? I, I, I forgive and I'm done? 
You know, what, let me tell you what happens here is that most of the things that I, that you will read about forgiveness always stops with the activity of forgiveness. Sure. And that, that's usually a, a choice of your will. You, I make a decision, mm-hmm. I'm going to forgive. So I, I, I forgive. And then a week later, then those feelings of unforgiveness come back. So, you know, a lot of the counsel is, well, you just got to keep forgiving. Mm-hmm. Like you got to forgive a thousand times. And I ask, right. why? Why? I mean, if you, if you actually made that decision and you chose to do that. So let me tell you what happens here is that we have a mindset that's still in agreement with bitterness. If feelings of bitterness come back up. So this is the way that strongholds work. You'll find this in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, when it talks about we have weapons that tear down strongholds. And then it talks about really the mind. We're capturing every thought. So a stronghold is a just like a it's a house of thoughts. It's it's a, a system of thinking. So it can be bad or it can, it can be, be good. righteous or it can be unrighteous. A good stronghold. That's, that's right. Yeah. So so what happens is that you know the truth is whenever you tear down an ungodly stronghold, you have to rebuild a godly stronghold in the opposite spirit. Hmm. That makes so sense. I have to address bitterness. So I have to replace you know those thoughts of bitterness you know with with compassion because that's in the opposite hmm. spirit. So, because if I still have those thinking, see what happens, the way that you think determines how you feel and how you feel usually just produces actions. So the, we just kind of back up. So if I'm going to address my feelings, I have to address my thinking. So what I have to do, I have to build a stronghold of compassion. And, if, and what happens, if I, if I have a stronghold of compassion, I'm going to look at my offender through the eyes of Jesus. Now, Jesus forgave his offenders. He's hanging on the cross because he was so full of compassion. Those people that put him up there, he's not angry. He's not bitter. He is forgiving them because he's so full of compassion. And that same Jesus lives in you. And so you have the grace to be able to forgive like Jesus forgives. So you can actually begin to tree train yourself really in the ways of compassion. Hmm. Now, uh, I like how you, you say in your, your teaching mm-hmm. that you need to starve bitterness and feed compassion. Yeah. What are some of the ways I can, I can do that? Well, one mm. thing you can do, you can start thinking about how much has God forgiven you? Mm. I mean, yeah. all the stuff, I mean, a lot. <laughs> yeah, you, we put him on the cross, right? Yeah. I mean, our yeah. sin put him on the cross. So he forgave us of all of all the stuff that we did against him. So you need to just meditate. I mean, not, not to beat yourself up or to mm-hmm. feel condemned or shamed, something like that. But just you, the sense of gratitude and gratefulness, you know, look, look what you've done for me, God. And so if I start meditating on what he's done for me, mm-hmm. then I begin to see others, you know, pretty much in that particular light, you know. So then I'm going to start focusing that the God has given me the grace to love because, you know, whatever, you know, freely I've received, you know, freely I've received his love. I can freely give that love. So I started thinking about his love that, that, you know, that's in me to be able to love, you know, because first John says that, you know, those of us are in him, we can love with his love. Is it possible to get to that place with that Teflon spiritual armor to become unoffendable to really deal with it quickly. Is that, is that your experience now? Well, if you just think about it this way, if you know today somebody is going to offend me, I'm ready for it. Mm. <laughs> I'm ready for it. So it's like whenever that happens, I go, okay, I'm ready for that one. So it's, it's when you're taken by surprise, like, oh, mm-hmm. so <laughs> yeah, that's really where the Teflon thing comes in. Gotcha. Now, Rodney, there may still be somebody who's watching. In fact, a lot of people are watching. Yeah. They, they, again, they, they hear what you're saying. I understand. I, I've got to do it. I understand their benefits. But they're still struggling. They know that this is a lie of the enemy, that they're trying to punish them, and it's not really happening that way. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's a saying that unforgiveness is a poison we drink, hoping the other person gets sick. So, but they're, but they're still struggling. Yeah. Can you look into the camera right now and pray for yeah. that person who wants to forgive? Sure. So Lord Jesus, I just want you just to come and just visit everyone who's just listening and watching this. Lord, we just thank you that you have forgiven us of everything that we have done. You know all of our darkness. You know all of our sins. You know even the things we've kept in secret, yet Jesus, you've forgiven us of everything. 
So Lord, I ask that you now just give us the grace. Give us the grace to forgive as we have been forgiven. Father, as we have freely received it, Lord, Father, we just want to freely give it. So Lord, I just ask you that you just pour yourself upon them, to, that they will experience your love fully and will just want to be a conduit of your love to others. And I bless them with that grace in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We all need to forgive. So if you are a believer, you're commanded to do it, but there's also benefits. Don't cheat yourself out of blessings. Get everything that God has provided for you. Don't walk out, of, uh, out from under that umbrella of protection and favor that God has put over you. You want to achieve your full destiny. Now, if you don't yet know Jesus, forgiveness is going to be pretty hard. You need to come to know the God of forgiveness. Yeah. When you've experienced forgiveness for yourself, having everything you've ever done forgiven because of the blood of Jesus, then you will be able to walk in forgiveness and freedom. Do it today and join us again next time for something more.